another AV jam. God knows which one I've lost count. I don't know. We are here, as always, with a great friend from across the pond. Chuck, give us a wave, mate. We are going to talk education. I mean, why else would we have Chuck if we weren't going to talk education? Unless it was bacon. Bacon. Yeah, yeah, it would be bacon would be the other subject. Bacon and <laughs> some some usually type of uh, thing that goes with bacon, uh, beer, bourbon, one of those other things. <laughs> it's all the bees. Anything. Anything. All the bees. <laughs> beer, bourbon, bacon, and vegetation. <laughs> I could think of another bacon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and with that, okay, we yeah, get to education. <laughs> Next. So, um, we're going to start with, I think we're going to start with you, for the reason of, I know you guys have had a bit of a chat regarding education paths. For, for salespeople, the, what comes before CTS? How, how do you get a guy from outside of the industry up to CTS? Because... Um, it's too much of a leap, you know, even with a bit of an IT background or something. It, it feels like too much of a leap. So what's the journey? What journey do we have to put our guys on to get them so, to that point that they can pass the CTS? Uh, good question, good question. And this is a question that comes up quite a bit uh, because sales – Sales is is really – when you first get into sales, you can sell anything. If you're a good sales guy and you know how to make your, your lines and you're good with Salesforce or any of the other softwares, you can sell anything. How do you get to AV sales? And uh, when you get into AV sales, how do you get into that CTS? Well, most of the sales guys I know came in because somebody said, hey, we have a sales opening. You're a good guy. You can get spun up on the product. And so they come in and they take a few classes, look at some manufacturers, or or uh, they kind of look at what equipment we're selling and, and get knowledgeable on the product. They talk to the reps and they talk to the engineers and get what they need to know about the product. The problem happens is when they have to go out and do a needs analysis. And this is what our sales guys now are having to do more and more is sit down and talk to the client about what their enterprise needs, not just now, but tomorrow. And what technologies can they use? And they really have to understand the technologies and more importantly, getting into the client's needs and being able to the, transfer that information to engineers. I do not expect my sales guide to be an engineer. And uh, at Avixa, we have a, what we call a quick start guide, and that really is the 10,000 foot view. So they could take that, ask a few questions, train a little bit with another sales guy, or even train with a sales engineer for what they need. Now, this is gonna get you so far. Uh, what you're going to need next is a deeper dive into education for a better understanding. So at this point, I would recommend some, you know, Avixa education, the essentials, but also manufacturer's education because the essentials is going to give you the quick down and dirty. This is what a sound wave is. This is what light waves are. These are what projector, you know, different types of projectors, different types of audio systems. Very, very basic. So with that basic understanding – a sales guy, and this pertains to not just sales, but new technicians, new engineers. They can go into the different parts and look and finally understand, hey, this is a DLP. It works like this. It's best to sit in these situations. This is a laser, best for this situation. This is a distributed audio uh, versus a point source. This is better for this situation than that situation. And report more back to the engineer. So they can do a better needs analysis for the client. So uh, we go through essentials, some manufacturer's trainings to figure out what those essentials do, get a little bit more experience, maybe take a, a CTS prep or some online uh, CTS preparatory classes, on-site preparatory classes, get a little bit more spun up on AV. And then I always recommend for anyone new, don't take the test immediately after if you're new. If you don't have a lot of experience and you're taking the uh, CTS exam prep to get more information – Put those concepts into action, and once you start putting those concepts into action, you really get to feel what more of solutions are, what the solution needs to be, how you get these concepts and make them solutions. And for salespeople, uh, creating solutions is what the, – they're the tip of the spear on that. Sales drives our entire business, and if you can come in and not just nurture that relationship but really sharpen the tip of that spear – 
you can hand off a better uh, site survey, a better needs analysis to your engineering team. Um, and if they want to stop there, that is going to be better than 99% of what everybody else is doing. Is manufacturer training delivered by web detrimental to learning? Do you prefer to go to a classroom? I prefer yeah. classroom. Okay. Classrooms are different. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I've, I, I look back at a lot of my certificates from all, everything from the first plasma sync screens, and you know, I did, I did classes on it, and they were all in class, and there was no, there was no web version delivered. And when is there a lack of motivation to do web-based training? I, I think so. I can't do it anymore. I can't do web training. I mean, I did, I did CTS D with you, Chuck. I could have never done that self-paced at all. Not, not one bit. All the stuff I've done before that weren't even AV, all the IT stuff, so CCNAs and MCSEs, there's not a cat in hell's chance I could have done that self-paced web learning. I just can't do it. Your mind's elsewhere. But I do think sometimes with the manufacturer stuff... But people like Crestron have classes down at Heathrow. They do. Crestron are and, the same, but not they're all... They're good classes, aren't they? They are really good, but not all do, and I think that is the problem. Like you said, getting the sales guys educated it doesn't mean they have to sit the exam and show here's what i've done having that knowledge is king you said you went on that plasma however many years ago i know you've done so many different things in the past that education for sales certificate or not gives you that confidence i think to go and be able to speak about it but you should want to you should want to do it yeah you? i it's... It's in, so Chuck, Chuck said it early on. Generally, a good sales guy can sell, right? No matter what format they're in, a good sales guy can sell. So what I kind of question a little bit sometimes is the validity of having to have a uniformity for training. And as Chuck's been speaking and I listen to him, it makes sense. But from my point of being able to sell, I can generally go out and sell. Do I need to go and spend a lot of time doing somebody's training course to continue doing what I'm already doing? Is it going to make me a 100% better salesperson by doing a course and doing the RUs and following up and everything like that? Or, or, or am I fighting a losing battle in some respects? No, your product, no, your market, no, your I, I think so, that's different. You know, that, 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 a third of that is no, your product. And I, you, I you know, think you've got so. to stay on top of that, right? Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, you've been doing this long enough that you do know your product. Yeah, if we're but, talking about new guys into it, that's I think exactly. it's a bit different. I think they should. They should do some product knowledge. You can't go out and, yes, I get you get your beautiful, here's the pretty overview. But you know yourself, you'll go in and say, here's your pretty, mm -hmm. and here's a little bit of reason why. And I think it's that reason why. Yes. Yeah, 100%. I mean, if you're looking at, I could give you a, a hundred examples right off the bat. If I have a sales guy going in and saying, uh, you need a projector. You need a projector that's so bright and doing this and that. But if you if you do a proper needs analysis and talk to the client and they say, well, you know, we need this projector to do this, but we also have this kind of content. We look at specific colors. But if the sales guy from the very beginning said, well, I have this thing with these two different color wheels. Tell me about how you use your projector. That's the question you want to ask. Not it's going to meet this brightness. That, that's me telling you what it's going to do. I want to know what you need so technically I can go to the right thing and spec the part. So at the end, you boot up the screen. Screen look great. Your browns are brown. Your reds are red. Your oranges are orange. They don't care if it's 15 to 1 or 10 to 1. What I need to do is listen to your reason and why you need it and then pick the best one based on my technical knowledge. And that's what experienced sales guys do. And yeah. I think that's, as you said, that gives them the confidence that, yes, you're doing the needs analysis, but you're yeah. kind of explaining right. it with them. Let, let, me, let me wrap this up with needs analysis. Mm. That's the big thing, that we want our sales guys to do needs analysis right. Mm. And if we've gone through a massive internal understanding what needs analysis even is yeah. thing within, within the organisation. So do a VIXA run anything specifically to assist with needs analysis? 
I am glad you asked because <laughs> yes, uh, we actually have a design boot camp coming up in the UK. Uh, and design level one, the very first day of design level one, the entire day is devoted to needs analysis and site survey, looking at how to make a proper program report, what questions to ask the client. And this is a design level course. You do not need to be a CTS to attend this course. You do not need to have gone through any of the CTS uh, classes. It really helps if you do. And this is uh, what they call design boot camp. It's uh, nine days of design school. We split it up into three different classes. <laughs> and, yeah, we split it up. Uh, the first design level <laughs> one is – March uh, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Uh, the second will be in April, April 30, uh, May 1st and May 2nd. The third will be May 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Um, we split these up into three-day uh, courses. So the very first day, the entire day, all we talk about is needs analysis. And I recommend this to sales guys, even if you don't want to take the rest of the design course. Design level one for sales guys is great because it really gives them that foundational knowledge of what you need for needs uh, needs analysis and what your engineers are expecting. It's all about the environment, how to analyze the environment. And more sales guys have been successful going in with a, an SPL meter and a light meter, taking a few measurements. And I've seen them give their engineers information within the engineer has a little tear because they got <laughs> such good information and knowing how to make a good uh, site survey list and needs analysis list. So, um, yeah, AV Design Bootcamp in the UK, March 12th to the 14th, April 30th to May 2nd, May 21st to 23rd. You could take one. You can take all of them. Uh, I will be actually teaching these courses. And if you send your sales guys to design one, I guarantee you will not be disappointed in their results. They come this out of there – You've reminded me when we did ours, we did have some guys that only did the first yep. boot camp. They didn't do the others. Well, they and were they scared off that. because of your sightline study, I think. <laughs> Mate, that was the best sightline <laughs> ever. Infamous. It was definitely it was hilarious. <laughs> we don't, you don't have to talk about that. Talk about that when I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on that note, should we? Uh, we'll end it there. We're, we've 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 done our time, mate. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Really good to catch up with you again. I'll uh, I'll see you again soon. Yeah. Great to see you all, and I will be down in a week uh, week and some change. Hopefully, we get together for a pint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See you soon. Perfect. Thanks, yeah. Thank you, mate. Bye.